Hey guys, okay, good morning, happy Monday. Okay, so, whew, today's gonna be a little different. You know, I had this, this idea, I had this in my mind that I was gonna come on, I was gonna talk to you about self-sabotage and getting your diet back on track after, after Easter um, and talk to you about my self-sabotage program, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that because I had something happen to me today that really made me think about the way that my clients and I show up in my life and it was really powerful and if you're a mom specifically if you're a mom or a dad this is going to really support you today because I know you've probably been here and I want you to use this lesson I'm this this incident that I had as a lesson I really do because I think it will really support you um, and I was gonna <laughs> I was just gonna say I think it'll be relatable but there's a lot of press right now on that word relatable, thanks to Rachel Hollis. <laughs> so I'm gonna refrain from using relatable and instead say I think this will be supportive, not just relatable. Okay, so for those of you who don't know me, first and foremost, I mean, my name is Jen, and I like to be known as Jen the Generator. I really love supporting women and generating their own power so they can stop blowing up their life and instead start blowing up the beliefs that no longer serve them. And so I call myself a mind ascension coach, which I just started calling myself because I truly believe it is an ascension into the most powerful tool we have, our mind. And when we can manage this, we can just about manage anything. So what I wanna share with you is a little vulnerable today. Um, I have to be honest, today was a really hard morning. It was a hard mom morning. And today I got to let go of a lot of control and I got to let go of a lot of fear. And I had to do that. I got to do that so that I could support my daughter into stepping into more autonomy, stepping into more agency of her life, stepping into more freedom in her life. And it was hard. It, it was hard, but it wasn't impossible. It felt doable. And this is the interesting thing. As I was watching her get into a car for driver's ed, at 14 and a half in Idaho, they actually let that happen. <laughs> I realized that, you know, as a parent, we have all these fears around our, with our kids. We have all these limiting uh, beliefs about, you know, what, what could happen to them, what might happen to them on the playground when they're little, don't go on the swings. It might, you might fall. And then we put our fears on them and we try to control them and we try to mold them and contain them. We try to be perfect parents, right? Um, and, and as they get older, you realize that putting your fears and your expectations on them doesn't serve them. It really serves you. And so as she's gotten older, I've realized, and, and please chime in here if you felt this like, whew, um, release when your kids hit these milestones in their lives. And like there were times where I had to let go of the fear of her skiing down these crazy ski races. There was these times I had to even let go of her on the playground getting on the swing set. I had to let go of the fear of her heartbreaking, right? All these things that I had to let go of in order for her to ascend into an autonomous agent of her own life. Because I knew that my limiting beliefs right? The things that I wasn't letting go of for her were going to limit her. And of course, as a parent, we don't want to limit our children. We want to give them, you know, endless possibility and opportunity. And I knew that by holding her back, putting my fears on her, my control on her, that it limits her ascension. And it's hard. But for some reason, you guys, for some reason, it's not as hard is when we're trying to let go of the limiting beliefs we have for ourselves. It's almost like if it's easier to let go if it serves somebody else, right? If it serves our family, if it serves our husband, if it serves our kids. But when we're trying to let go of the things that don't serve us, that keep us small, that keep us playing in the mediocre world, for some reason it feels unimaginably hard to let those go and we keep repeating those behaviors over and over but yet we learn our lesson with our kids and our husband and, and the people around us but yet it's harder for us to do it and let go of the things that aren't serving us so that we can ascend isn't that interesting 
So I was thinking about that today and how hard it is, how hard it has been in my life, and I don't, I don't know if you can relate or not, to let go of those patterns and to really work through them so that I could ascend, so that it would support me. And, and that's been really a hard thing. It was a really hard thing in my life. And I see it show up for my clients and I have to work through that with them. I get to work through that with them until they can fully drive their Ferrari, like I call it. I should probably explain that. So I truly believe that we're all given, like us vessels are like Ferraris or Porsches or insert your favorite race car, your high performance vehicle. We're all given endless possibilities, right? And this exhilarating mechanism and vehicle to reach our values, our divine purpose, our our calling. We're all given them. But these traumas, experiences, stories that we pick up along the way keep us driving our Ferraris like they're mid-sized cars, like they're a Prius. Not that there's anything wrong with a Prius, or they're they're like a minivan or something that doesn't can't quite go to the level that a Ferrari can, right? So I, I, I try to explain it to my, my clients is like they're the governors of their life. It's like when you put a governor on a Ferrari and it can't go past 80. It's like, you know, it's capable. It's possible for it to go 150. But for some reason, that governor is just there and it won't let you accelerate. You keep trying and it's like you keep getting stuck up against that governor. And you know what your Ferrari's made of. You know what's possible for your Ferrari. But you have to drive it like a mid-sized car because that governor keeps stopping you. And that governor is keeping you from operating at 100% of your capacity and your possibility. Because there's these limiting beliefs that are stopping you from accelerating your life. So if you're currently the governor of your life, if you're putting a governor on your Ferrari right now, I want you to really evaluate that. I did for a long time. I had this Ferrari, I still have it, you have it. And I kept operating at 50%. I kept stopping myself. I really wanted to go at 100, but I was afraid. I was fearful. I was scared of the exhilaration. I was scared of maybe the success of winning. I was, I was scared of what my car could really do. I'd never seen what it could do before, so I was scared of it. And that's what your subconscious is doing. It's stopping you like a governor. So this is what I want to ask you right now. Are you willing this Monday, are you willing this Monday to remove the governor on your Ferrari and finally take your foot and slam it down, pedal to the metal and fully accelerate your life. What would it feel like? How exhilarating would it be? What would the adrenaline be like in your body? And connect to that. If you knew you were operating at 100%, what is possible for you past the governor? All right, you guys. I want to share that with you today. I love you. Thanks for listening. Talk to you soon.